With the current state of the game, there are many things that can be done to improve the quality of it. So here are 10 ways to make Dead by Daylight a more enjoyable experience. Number 1. Rework Toolboxes Toolboxes are the crux of the main issue of the game, gen rushing. Survive with friends groups will queue up with the intention of bringing the best speed tools to get all the gens done as fast as possible, which leaves the killer with mostly not much to do to counter such play, other than bringing a ton of slowdown perks. This is not healthy for the game, as it incredibly limits creativity for killer and survivor in their own ways. Since toolboxes are one of the most powerful items, if not the most powerful item in the game now, a complete rework of how toolboxes work is really the only way to nerf toolboxes in a way that will still make them viable, and I believe Osdarva's rework idea was genius and should be implemented into the game. Instead of toolboxes simply increasing gen speeds, they will increase the floor in which progress cannot be regressed past. In other words, you have a toolbox that will repair 15% of the generator, and after using the full toolbox, the generator will not regress past the 15% that the toolbox was used for. This would drastically eliminate gen rushing as a whole and incentivize survivors to use toolboxes early game to secure progress on a generator. At worst, with these stats, four survivors will be able to guarantee 60% or a bit more depending on how add-ons work of the generator's progress. This is miles better than four survivors bringing four toolboxes currently with busted add-ons and doing three generators in less than two minutes. I also think this allows for a bit more creativity with reworking add-ons, since you have more headroom to work with when it comes to balance. But toolboxes could still be a problem if Brand New Part wasn't nerfed as well. Brand New Part could actually still work as intended, but it also either depletes your toolbox completely or consumes it entirely. This would still make it a strong iridescent add-on while not as abusable as using brand new part and still having charges to heavily increase the gen speeds. With these changes, toolboxes would remain a very useful and powerful item that can still combat ultra gen regression builds while also leaving less pressure for the killers to bring such builds. Let me know what you all think since there are still minor details that might need to be addressed. Number 2. Make add-on rarities consistent for all items as it is with Killer. Survivors have this weird situation where the add-ons are scattered in a mess of different rarities and effects from item to item. Keys don't have an ultra rare, maps don't even have two very rares, and Toolbox only has one ultra rare. Behavior seems to want to make add-ons consistent, seen by the medkit rework recently standardizing the add-on rarities. Some of these changes would be really easy by just bumping up the rarities of some add-ons and tweaking numbers to fit the new rarity status. For example, I honestly think that the Blood Amber and Unique Wedding Ring are already worthy of being ultra rares for the key. But on top of changing the rarities, the amount of add-ons for each item should also be consistent. Currently, the amount of add-ons for each item is not the same across the board. Keys have 9, Toolboxes have 11, and medkits have 13. I think that although the medkits were just reworked along with the add-on rarities, I think there should be 10 add-ons for each item. 2 common, 2 uncommon, 2 rare, 2 very rare, and 2 ultra rare. I think this makes complete sense and would whittle out all the add-ons that are never used and make add-on quality more consistent in return. You'll finally be wasting less blood points on useless add-ons and improve the quality of life for items and survivor as a whole. 3. Rework the map item I think it goes without saying that maps are the most neglected and underused items in the game and are the only item to have an ultra-rare variant. I think how maps work currently are very limiting, boring, and need to be reworked heavily to actually consider bringing. My idea is this. Heavily increase the range of what objects can be tracked to 48 meters, or farther even, but you have to be able to see the object to track it. This makes it feel like an actual map, as it's like the survivor is keeping track of what they see so they can reference it later on in the match. You channel the map to note objects down, while also slowing down the survivor slightly to emphasize the survivor actually using the map to write down where the objects are and to also prevent it from being overused in chase. Then, you can press another button to inspect the map, which will then highlight all objects you've noted down. 
this would finally not render the map useless once you run out of charges, but simply you won't be able to track any more objects. This then can lead to many unique and interesting add-ons being added to the map. For example, since totems would now be harder to track with maps, since they are typically more hidden, you can use an add-on such that it automatically has two totems tracked on the map, and this can be applied to more objectives, like hooks, generators, basement, windows, pallets, and even buildings like the killer shack and the main building. It widens the potential of the map drastically, as well as help newer players find objectives in enclosed maps such as the game or midwitch. While you may think that maps would then naturally be worse on enclosed realms like I just mentioned, I would argue the opposite. All the player has to do now is simply find a generator, mark it on the map, and now they will always be able to reference the map to find any generators they previously tracked, rather than only tracking as long as you have charges on the map. I think the ultra rare map would be very much worth it if it could track basically anything that is interactable on the map, like what was previously mentioned with windows, pallets, killer shack, etc. The rare map would only be able to track the basics, like generators, totems, exit gates, and hatch. To compensate for these changes, maps would not have anything pre-tracked unless you brought an add-on to do so, and would only have 15 seconds to track objects. This overall would make maps way more relevant, help the casual player base, and would help with actual interesting and unique add-ons that you could make a build around, like totem hunting. It would also alleviate some of the overuse of Windows of Opportunity, which is one of the most used perks currently. I'm definitely not saying that Windows of Opportunity is broken, and it's very useful for solo queue survivors and newer players especially, but the map could act as a somewhat replacement for it so you can experiment with more interesting perks and add-on combinations. I think this idea overall is good and could be added to Dead by Daylight very well. 4. Add a secondary objective to the game Now, this might turn off some people, but hear me out. The early game is where the main problem for a majority of killers comes from, like the Trapper, Hag, Clown, Michael, and other killers. Survivors will spawn right next to a generator with two other people and immediately begin working on it and completing it within around 40 seconds. With that, think for a moment, how is the generator being powered? Well, most likely through gasoline. So, instead of immediately being able to power a generator from seemingly nothing, why don't we add gasoline cans, which would spawn around the vicinity of a generator, that then needs to be poured into the generator for maybe 12 to 15 seconds before being able to actually complete repairs on the generator. This simple addition would drastically decrease the amount of immediate gen rushing in the game, make the game more immersive overall, and also level the playing field a lot more for the lower tier killers, giving them more time to set up or build their power. Killers overall would become a bit more powerful and would balance the game more towards killers, which is always a great thing in my opinion, due to the game always being more survivor-sided. With all of these ideas combined, you might again need to tweak the gen slowdown perks ever so slightly, but I believe just changing a few numbers for perks is well worth all the upsides these ideas bring. This idea in particular really seems like it could work for DVD, so please let me know what you think down in the comments below. 5. Nerf Map Offerings I've always thought that map offerings should not essentially guarantee that you get that map, regardless of offerings like Sacrificial Ward. Now, I'm not entirely sure how the logic for picking a map works, but I believe Otstarva's idea for map offerings is a great idea that should be implemented. I would, however, change the numbers around slightly. I think overall, heavily increasing your chances by 80% still to get the exact map that you want can still be dangerous for both sides, and I believe simply changing this to 60% would achieve a better balance. Also, I don't know if this was intended or if I am wrong, but with how Otstarva explains the idea, a group of two or three survivors with both 60% and 40% of going to a certain map, and all people in the group bringing the same offering, you end up with more than a guaranteed chance of getting that map. The main reason I'm making this point is because this game is a little bit more survivor-sided, and with the maps being unbalanced as is, and no drastic changes being made anytime soon, 
the ability for survivors to still guarantee or greatly increase their chance to go to Mount Ormond, for example, will still make it frustrating for killers. That's why I think dropping the chance from 80% to 60% would make more sense overall for the sake of not sending killers to disgusting maps like Mount Ormond, and vice versa with killers like Hag bringing the survivors to Midwich. Then, the numbers would simply change to 30% if in a 2-man group, 20% if in a 3-man group, and 15% if in a 4-man group. This would make survivors expend more offerings overall to get the same chance as a solo queue survivor, which I think makes complete sense to combat survivors abusing survivor sighted maps. 6. Add a character rotation. For a game that you have to spend $30 for, the monetization is, well, pay to win. Regardless of what you think, players are extremely limited to what they can play as for killer and survivor without spending more money on the game and I think a clear way to mitigate this is to simply add a character rotation, just as the mobile version does. Honestly, it is surprising how many great features are a part of the mobile version of the game that aren't in the main game. Character rotation could work just like the Shrine of Secrets, except you'll be able to try out and play two different non-licensed survivors and killers. It would act as if they had just unlocked them, so you can decide to upgrade them further if you want. Then, every Wednesday, the characters would change. It gives the ability to try out characters and see if they want to pay for them. I believe this really wouldn't harm the game in any way and would be received very positively by the community. Number 7. Change the Shrine of Secrets The Shrine of Secrets is kind of an outdated system, because with only two perks available for each side every week, along with the amount of perks in the game, the chance of you getting a perk that you want is very low. With many of the best perks, especially for Killer, being locked behind paywalls, the Shrine of Secrets proves to be a flawed way of getting any more content for any players that don't want to pay for DLC, in a paid game by the way. I think an interesting change for the Shrine would be instead of rotating every week, it rotates every day. This would allow literally 7 times the perks being shown per week. Other systems could work, but I would find this to be the simplest way of making a small, but impactful change for everyone, especially free-to-play or newer players. Number 8. Share items across all characters. I am honestly surprised why this isn't the case in the first place. Especially for Survivor, it's unjustified. Why aren't the items, add-ons, and offerings shared across all of your characters? This would be such an amazing change that would allow you to play characters you wouldn't typically play as, whether it's because they didn't have good items, or add-ons, or offerings. For Killer, it would work the same other than add-ons since those are Killer-specific. You won't have to worry anymore about having escape cakes on a Killer you want to play, or not having a Mori for a challenge with a specific Killer. This is already done on the mobile version, so why not for the core game? This could also give them the chance to lower the amount of items you get on the blood web, so leveling up is a bit easier, if you think the overall abundance of items is a problem. Number 9. Add more communication options. This is another feature I'm surprised hasn't been added yet. I personally don't see why this game can't have a game chat or some sort of communication tab, just like the mobile version has. A big issue Dead by Daylight has currently is the lack of communication that survivors have. Behavior have made improvements on the game, like with the HUD telling generally what's going on with each survivor. However, this only tells you so much information, and I think voice chat or a communication tab would be a much appreciated addition to the game. Just the option of having it is great to have. I foresee the argument that people will be toxic. Well, then just mute them. There should obviously be a mute button and a mute all button to always mute teammates each game if it's not something you want at the moment. People in any game with voice chat have the potential to be toxic, but for that to be the only reason that there is no voice chat is quite a weak argument. If you don't want voice chat, then just add, like I mentioned, a communication tab to quickly message if you're going to unhook a survivor, or if you're going to get chased ahead of time, or if the killer is leaving you ahead of time. A very simple, yet effective way to shorten the barrier between solo queue and a Survive With Friends group. 
Number 10. Okay, how the f does the mobile version of the same game have a ranked queue, but the main game doesn't? <clears throat> Almost lost my cool there. But really, the mobile version of DVD has a ranked queue, which basically is just like the ranks in the core game, but mobile also has the option for a quick match, and I think this could be interesting to add to the core game. Almost like Smash 4 with the For Fun and For Glory modes, Dead by Daylight could benefit from a casual fun queue and a more serious ranked mode that will have the expectation that survivors are trying to win and aren't messing around. This is probably the most controversial change they could make, but this could be a good system so that people that want specific experiences can seek those experiences out. This would also bring up the potential to add a leaderboard. I think a leaderboard that would showcase who the top ranked players are, on top of random stats like most gens done, most chases, and most escapes, would be a fun addition that I can't imagine people would complain about. All of these changes have the potential to make Dead by Daylight a great and fun game that people actually take seriously. So, what do you think of these changes?